When I first arrived in Europe, I expected to see beautiful landscapes and matching architecture. At first, I was met with exactly what I expected, beautiful scenery and quaint, colorful houses. However, in Bavaria, Germany, we went to two different castles built by King Ludwig II of Bavaria. He was an eccentric kind of guy, using his, his fortune and borrowing others' money to fund his love for the arts and retreat into extravagant castles that he built. The first of these castles that we visited was Neuschwanstein Castle, located on the side of a hill overlooking the valley town of Hohenschwangau in west, southwestern Bavaria. This storybook castle was made in homage to one of Ludwig's favorite musicians and composers, Richard Wagner, and Wagner's operas. The castle has the architectural style of the Roman Romanesque revival, known as the Rundbogenstil, or the round arched style. The castle's conception came from Ludwig taking two strips to Einsnach, Germany, to see another castle, and to France, to admire the Chateau de Pierrefonds. The castle was built to be a romantic interpretation of the Middle Ages, as well as embody the operas of Wagner, whose works Tannhauser and Lundgren had made a lasting impact on the king. Ludwig kept such a close eye on the plans and construction of the castle that it's been regarded as his own creation rather than that of the architects. In the interior of the castle, the walls are decorated with extravagant paintings and designs depicting the tales of Lohengrin, the Swan Knight, whose exploits were used in Wagner's operas. Many of the rooms show scenes from Wagner's various operas, including a permanent theater set for one of the plays. The completed rooms are definitely fit for a king, but many were never finished as Ludwig died before the completion of the castle. Only 14 of the planned 200 rooms were completed. But the Hall of Singers, Ludwig's favorite room, was completed and depicts themes from Lohengrin and Parsifal, both German poems and legends from the Middle Ages, which served as a monument to the love and culture he felt that were representative of the Middle Ages. I found it especially odd that in this picturesque castle, there's an artificial grotto off of the king's drawing room. It's modeled after a grotto in German mythology and Wagner's Tannhasse. It even has an artificial waterfall and colored lights. Linderoff Palace, a schloss in southwest Bavaria and the smallest palace built by King Ludwig II. It's also the only one he lived to see completed. Designed in the Rococo period style, it was built in honor of the Sun King, Louis XIV, and is a miniature model of the Palace of Versailles. The rooms in the palace are made to look like those found in the French original as King Louis was an idol to Ludwig. However, the Rococo style of the building is because the, of the movement that was created by Louis XV. The motif of the sun is everywhere in the palace. When we first walked in, the first room had its ceiling covered by this image of a golden sun and two sculpted angels blowing trumpet fanfare for the king. This was over a small statue of the sun king himself riding atop a horse. The sun represents the French idea of absolutism, which for Ludwig is perfect for his notion of a God-given monarchy to rule the populace. There were mirrors and gold plate everywhere in the palace. Murals, white, clean walls, and mirror after mirror after mirror. Especially in the Hall of Mirrors, modeled after the same room in Versailles, which holds Ludwig's massive vase collection. His bedchamber was the biggest room in the palace, with a seven-foot-long bed. However, unlike Louis's bedchamber, which had, was clad in red and facing south, Ludwig's is an exact mirror, but clad in blue, facing north showing Ludwig's self-image of being the Night King. This palace ha also has an artificial grotto, although outside, 